I'm Carl Kaufman and we're standing on a lot in New Era. New Era is just south of Oregon City between Oregon City and Canby. Uh, this is a site of an old lumber mill that was removed years ago. It's also the area that we incubated Relevant Building Company. We uh, replaced an old uh, pole barn that was here with a new pole barn that's now here and inside of that we constructed the building behind me and the building off to my side over here. These are houses that we uh, have, have chosen to keep, use them for family time during the summer, but primarily we show them. We show these probably five times a week. Uh, the deluxe right here is made up of two shipping containers with a bridge between them. The bridge is all stick built. What Relevant Building provides is the shipping container portion of this and as a prefabricator we're trying not to become a builder so we work with a local builder wherever this is going to help them come up with a process to be able to do what we did which was to build the center section between them which is what we call a bridge. The bridge is made up of everything you see that there is in gray. If you see behind the port de cachet here that that gray area all that shingles is this is a section that's between the two containers. There's a vertical wall coming up on this container and, and that and the one on the other container are both provided as part of the kit along with all the sloped roof that's down here. The, the decking, the porch is over here, the roof on top of that vertical wall, the end wall, none of that is part of the kit. So all that is the on-site build. We have that budgeted up. We think we have a price where most builders would be okay with it. So I can tell you now that a 1100 foot house, two bedroom, two bath, made out of, uh, that looks very similar to this, would be around $250,000 on a lot, someplace, somewhere. So here we are inside the Deluxe River model, uh, built by a relevant building company in Oregon City. The, uh, this model is, is designed with this high bridge section in it. It adds a huge amount of uh, volume, architects would call it. it uh, it's uh, 900 feet, feels like 11. Uh, it's a really, really comfortable space. The height of the, of the uh, center section here is maybe 13 feet and uh, has a loft up over, over that end. And the, uh, the containers, which are on the outbound side of these beams, there's one here and there's one there, these glue lamp beams are they're designed to hold up the roof of the container and the high wall is built on a beam so that we can crane it all in here and just set at one time. We put the kitchen and the bathroom all in one container so all the plumbing is, is kind of localized. This section between the two containers can be spread. This is eight feet. They can be 12 feet and that becomes a two bedroom, two bath. They can be 14 feet and that becomes a three bedroom, two bath. Or they can stay at eight feet and it's a two bedroom, one bath. All different options. There's so much you can do in the center session. I like this because it's not all just container. I really like that this has this wood accent, kind of feels like a Northwest kind of a home. So this is, this is a very comfortable feeling for, for me to have. It also has clear story windows up above, so it gets a lot of light in, and we've actually motorized a couple of those so we can just uh, push a button and vent that out. Uh, a lot of customizable options in, in all of the homes that we build, but this in particular has a lot of flexibility. Everything in the middle between the containers Everything between the high walls from roof to the floor, through the floor, has got to be built on site. So it takes a builder to be local. If we sell this to somebody in Bend, it'll take a builder from Bend to learn how to do this. And we, we consult with them. We'll tell them the, the things that we've learned about how this goes together so that they can become more comfortable with it. Because working with steel containers is a little bit not something you do when you carry nail bags normally. So uh, you have to have a welder and a nail bag to do these and we're the welder side of that. So this kitchen area is designed to take advantage of the view uh, that we have out here towards the river. 
this, uh, this kitchenette area here is, feels like a booth. We used reclaimed lumber that came out of a barn uh, being built in, or being torn down in La Grande. We fabricated this. It'll hold about surprisingly nine people there, which is a pretty good crowd for a small space. We're real big on IKEA cabinets. Uh, we don't have the ability to build cabinets ourselves, but we're pretty good about putting them together if somebody else does. We try to make use of all the small spaces. We like to in encourage a little bit of a Etsy-esque look. So we'll build some of our cabinets ourselves in our shop. Uh, we kind of fabricate islands where, where they're not normally made. We make spaces between them narrower than is commonly used in a, in a large house, but, but usable. We've got all the same conveniences you have in any other home. We have microwaves that come out of cabinets and different things like that. Um, everything has, uh, Ikea is really, really good with small spaces. So, for example, I mean, I just love how this thing works and it just comes out so you've got use of everything in there that you can get. So as I walk out of the kitchen, you'll see that we try to make use of every little area. If we have a little bit of space, we'll put in something that fits in there to try to make all the space mean something. Um, again, I'm walking through the, the bridge section uh, and above me is a loft, but we have a ladder to a storage area up here. Obviously, that can be used for somebody that comes over and is up on a, on a blow-up bed and it's a place to, to, to crash, right? We're, we're in the center section between two containers now, and I know that you can only see one of them, but I want to point out this is a cassette AC slash heating unit that we have. It's the same exact, it, it is a mini split. It's the same as you normally see on a wall. We put them in the ceilings. This is the only model that we currently make that has a sloped roof above it. So what that means is there's roof for us to mount that thing through the ceiling of the container and up into that roof section so that it has more, uh, so that it can actually fit. Otherwise it would be on a wall someplace. Uh, when we first built this unit, I was really nervous because it's a very dark color and I was afraid that it would get very hot. I've mentioned before that color means something to metal. If it has sunlight on a dark color, it's going to heat up and it's going to put more pressure on the air conditioning units. So I thought I'm going to put three units in. We have one, two, three units in this building right now. And, and what we've learned is that one of them will keep it completely comfortable. I completely overkilled at being nervous about that. That doesn't mean I wouldn't do it again. One of the misconceptions about container buildings is that they're all the same. I don't watch a lot of uh, reality TV shows about containers, but a friend of mine asked me to watch one one time. Uh, a fellow and his wife were demonstrating the container that they had built themselves in Oklahoma, did a good job, but it's interesting that you could tell, since I have a trained eye for this, that there's literally no insulation to speak of in it. You cannot take a container home and treat it like a wood framed home. It cannot be insulated with fiberglass insulation. If it is, it will, it will get condensation, it will mold, it will turn into a mess. So if somebody doesn't use uh, closed cell spray foam at the right quantities, they're really going to have the trouble in it. So the, the thermal barrier in a, in a metal container is, is very, very important. We spend probably $5,000 a unit to have a thermal analysis done on every unit that we make a model for so that we can ensure that we don't have any condensation in the walls. So another thing that people ask us about a lot of time is about windows. So we're sitting fortunately on the bank of the Willamette River, so we want a lot of glass out this side of the window. On the back side, we've got a train track, we wanted zero glass over there. One of the abilities that we have is to be able to move windows around very easily. So we can enlarge them, make them smaller, we can do a lot of things with them, we can move doors around. Uh, this, is the, this is the living room, it comfortably holds six or seven people. And then uh, as we walk over here, you see, you know, we're big on barn doors. Uh, this is our bathroom. It's got a four-foot shower, washer and dryer, uh, typical uh, vanity and, and uh, other items in there. We like to, to use accent walls. This is some wood that we bought from Salvage Works. It's a uh, company in um, North Portland that uh, sells salvage lumber and they deconstruct uh, houses and, and barns and, and uh, mill the wood down. And it's a very nice product. People are very drawn to the, to the look of the salvaged wood. So I 
got to tell you, it feels a little bit weird to be in the bedroom with you guys, but here, here we are. We're in the master bedroom. It's a little bit tight in here. Remember, this is the eight foot bridge that we're in. So if I was in the 12 foot, which is the, the smallest one shown on our website, or the 14 foot, the larger version, this room would simply be bigger. But back here we have a walk-in closet that's about six foot deep. It's very comfortable, very large. So this is the second bedroom in this house, and you can see it's got a reach-in closet here. It's a very comfortable space. Uh, we typically put our electrical panels someplace where most of the electricity is. So in this case, it's uh, here behind the door in the second bedroom. I'll also point out again that this again is the beams that we have out in the front. So everything to left here is, is part of that, of that loft area. That's all part of the built-in portion that's done on site. Everything from the container, which is right here. So this is part of that on-site build. It's really important to distinguish that. This particular building is the most complicated I have to explain to people, and I like the uh, opportunity to be able to do this on video. But the merits of this is that this unit is just a smaller footprint, right? It's a very livable footprint. I don't feel like I'm in a, a real small space, and, and I could comfortably live in this space. This unit costs maybe $250,000, uh, setting on somebody's site, all done. And um, we think that is a, a, a price that is competitive to wood, g given the design, certainly given the durability and some of those elements that, we can, that containers just carry. But the, but the Deluxe is probably one of our most popular units. People really are drawn to this style. We also make this in a mini version, like a mini me. A mini Deluxe is a 20-foot Deluxe instead of a 40-foot Deluxe. It'll be a one-bedroom, one-bath unit with a loft on it, which kind of takes some of the sting out of that second bedroom that you don't have. So we're really excited about that. It's a, it's a really good unit for an ADU. It's, it's a unit that I'll be building at the coast on a very small lot that that fits well on. We also sell our homes in four different phases. So somebody can buy just a shell with windows cut in it. They can buy a, a watertight shell with windows in those holes and, and a, a little roof over it. They can buy something that's built through insulation, which means it has electrical and plumbing that are roughed in and insulation sprayed over, or they can buy it completely finished. But so our, our price list on our website builds all that out, but it never includes the price of land. Thank you for watching our video and for stopping by Tiny House Expedition. I'm Alexis. And I'm Christian. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And for more tiny home tours and stories, click the videos below. And join us on Patreon for bonus content. Including face-to-face -face conversations with us. <laughs> we hope to see you there. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.